is a presentation of Real Wise Productions and Comey Media Incorporated. What are one of your five love languages and a relationship and a brotherhood and a friendship that has lasted from 1957 to today? Hmm. Next on Mentality. Welcome to another edition of Mentality, where we are in the business of iron sharpening iron in the realm of entrepreneurship, brotherhood, togetherness, love, and of course, the mental health realm. I am one of the co-hosts of Mentality, Cole Johnson, and I'm joined as always by the other co-host of this show, the man we call Wise El Jefe. How you doing, man? I am doing well, brother. I'm doing very well. But uh yeah. Sure. I'm excited. Let's let's get this going now. So as I've mentioned, Valentine's Day is around the corner. Uh and uh you might need to brush up on these types of jokes to tell your wonderful significant other. Uh, why do skunks love Valentine's Day? Why shouldn't you fall in love with the pastry chef? And what did the paperclip say to the magnet? Yeah, those wonderful things you might have to do just to break the ice a little bit to either the new love in your life or even the married love of your life. So. I was seeing this article on USA Today of uh, 75 hilariously heartfelt jokes and corny pickup lines for Valentine's Day cards or greetings. And it made me think, hmm, you know, we, we get geared up as men to, to, you know, to break the highest with women and we have to come up with something witty or something catchy, you know, sort of like the biggie line of, um, you know, uh, you know, you hear, you know, if you hear those, you hear the same thing. What's your name? What's your size? As soon as I, as soon as I hear that line, I just creep up behind. Uh, <laughs> and Max is what you're in, just uh, who you be who with. You be with. <laughs> Things that make you smile. What numbers to dial? You know, so <laughs> it, it sort of put me in line of that, right? So uh, I, I guess I will make this, I guess, personal for you. Um, how did your wife fall in love with you? I can't tell. I can't tell you how she fell in love with me. Mm -hmm. I can tell you how I fell in love with her. Okay, you can do that. Because I can't really tell you how. Like I can't really tell, mark down that moment because it's quite a few. We've had a, quite a few moments. So, mm -hmm. but I can tell you what really made me be like, mm, I I got one here. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell this all the time is when yeah. she asked me if I had a passport, and my answer was no. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well. We're gonna have to fix that, like yo, let's end like right now. And she, she put she forced she got me to get my passport, and we've uh, stamped it quite a few times already. So, hmm. okay, yeah, well, that's cool. And and look, that when you well, I've heard this story uh, before, and I love the fact that it it it, it accomplished two different things when 
when your wife, your at the time, your 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 lady, did that to you. One, it's it sort of it's like okay, hmm, travel, that's cool. Another was she wanted to introduce broadening her your horizons and what travel does is that it's more than just being in another uh, location. It's basically seeing another side of life and another side of the world and probably another side of yourself. And wow. Oh no, it, it's it's mm. uh, it's amazing. It's it's great mm. to have someone who wants to show you more to the world. Like I could have told you what this like for me Puerto Rico, I went to Puerto Rico so to me it's still part of the United States. It is. Uh, but like I've been able to, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to Aruba, I've been to the Bahamas, I've been to the Dominican Republic, and when we plan, she one one destination she wants to go to is Dubai. Mm-hmm. So, and my goal is to make that happen. Like mm. that's that's, I, and I asked, I said, Yo, where's some, what, where's somewhere you want to go? She goes, Where's this coming from? I said, just, Yo, just tell me somewhere you want to go. And she goes, Dubai. I said, All right, that's interesting. Okay. So that's uh that's up on that's already something I'm aiming for. That's mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I can uh somehow get a speaking gig out there. Dubai. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Now, I've heard of a lot of good things about Dubai, but uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, and the missus is go ahead. Not, somehow something happens and uh I could just go pay for the trip. That's it. It's yeah, gonna exactly. happen. Regardless is gonna happen. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, the missus loves to travel too. So, and she, you know, she wants to travel more and more as well with me. And yeah, I could tell you, uh, there was a, <laughs> the, uh, the, this moment sounds corny, but it's, I think it's endearing. <laughs> so when I, <laughs> so we had our first trip together and this was about months before we got married. We were in a hotel, and it was not um, not the most sanitary of situations. I think that's yeah. the best way I could put it. And m- my wife is a germaphobe. And uh, knowing that, uh, I knew she was going to have a difficult time trying to rest up before the next day we were going to get up and leave that hotel and go somewhere else. So she went to the bathroom, and then I took a Superman T-shirt of mine. And I draped it over the pillow. And she walked out. She saw the Superman shirt draped over the pillow. And she's been smitten with me ever since. And I thought, I'm like, this, this is rather corny. But I know she wouldn't want to lay her head on something of, 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 the, of, of the hotel. Maybe she'd want to lay her head on something of mine. So she did. And I don't know why she would have been like, we out. <laughs> <laughs> we, you see, we would have been. The thing was. We we were trying to we were trying to pinch pennies. Now today, oh yeah, as soon as soon as we saw something was foul, we'd be like, okay, we on the first thing smoking to the next hotel. <laughs> and not even question, not even question, yeah. not even question. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, our, our wives are. I think that I think they're Siamese twins. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, she she don't play that. No, and then the management will be an email and a phone call. Oh yes, oh yes. This one's a more sadder uh, story, and we wanted to touch on it the uh, week before, but we decided not to. But we'll do it now. Uh, as some of you may know, some of you might not. Uh, radio talk show host uh, Ricky Smiley had to deal with the, his oldest son's passing, and. Uh, his uh, son was 32 when he passed away, and he announced it. Uh, uh, he announced it in a in a release, you know, saying that he was flying to his hometown of Birmingham, and and he also had to make sure that he was taking care of his granddaughter. Uh, so heartbreaking as that is, grieving for men, I don't think is ever talked about. So. I know you've dealt with grieving. I know you've dealt with loss. So have I. Um, If there was something that you did not want to have someone say to you in the midst of grieving, what would that be? At least they're in a better place. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah, I, I know they mean well, but yeah, yeah, that's something you don't want to hear. Yeah, yeah, because you it's would hope a, that they. Go sorry ahead. for your loss, and and keep it moving. When uh, my wife went through the loss of her uh, her father, all I said was, "I'm not going to say to you to get over it, and I'm going to say to you to get uh, get past it. All I can say is get through it." And I am sorry for your loss. And she totally appreciated when I said that to her. Because I know that's something that she won't ever get past or ever get get over. How can you? No, no especially when, when the person has had an impact in your life. Right. So to say, to think that it's just going to go away. This, there's still moments to the day, this day, but it's just... Sometimes people are going to grieve the way they're going to grieve. And right. and I'm not saying every way is right. I'm not saying every wrong is wrong. It's just you're in the, the way you deal with it is the way you deal with it. It's, some people deal with it in a good way. I, I kind of dealt it with it in a bad way. And um, all you can really do is that just let that person just Give them that space, and when they're really ready to speak to you, or ready, to, or ready to, to talk about it, they'll come to you. Yeah, and that's what it takes. It just takes. It's when you're ready to really speak on it. Because mm-hmm. even when I started my podcast, I didn't really speak on it. And so once mm-hmm. I started getting start, so once I started getting people to share their stories, it was time for me to share my. Like I had to share mine. So I didn't really share it even at the beginning of of the podcast. It took some time before I even shared it. And it just, I just didn't felt it was a time yet. And then when I did feel, when I did let it out, it was just, that's just when the time was right. We'll be back in two and two. Alicia. You can't hold somebody to that standard if you haven't voiced what you want and what you're needing from that. Mika. If you're not communicating expectations, you're waiting for your feelings to be hurt. Nicole. A lot of people don't want to take the time out to be alone and to get themselves together. Ivan. You got to be willing to work through stuff. And from the jump street, y'all done had problems. Maybe you don't need to be working through those. BS3 Network proudly presents Queen 3 and King Podcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central. What's on E. Dicka's mind? A and B. I'm going to see my way out of it because why i don't care i have a message for people who do nothing but complain about black people we can't change who we are you call the cops on me i think that every time you call the cop on someone on a false accusation Yo, need to be a little bit punished. BS3 Network proudly presents a man with a lot to say, and it's unabashed to say it. What's on E Digger's mind? Sundays at 7:30 p.m. Central. Check your local listings for your viewing and listening pleasure. There's a book that was released about a couple of decades ago, and I think it's time to bring that book back up. And we're going to do that in the debut segment of Something to Ponder. So, the 
the five love languages. The book basically details five different languages that we speak and the five different love languages that we accept love. And there's, of course, we can be a myriad of these five or a combination of these five, but there's one that normally is dominant. And there's one that's dominant in how we receive love as well. So the book goes into how you could tell what your love language is. And you, know, you take this quiz to understand what it's about. Now, the love languages that are offered are acts of service or, of course, like if you do something for somebody, of receiving gifts such as, you know, not just Christmas or birthdays, but any any occasion. Uh, quality time, simply that's quite put, simply put, you spend time with someone who you feel, believe is special. Words of affirmation, like compliments, or, or physical touch, which, of course, you gather a lot of strength from when someone touches you. Now, I will pose this question to uh, my my wonderful brother here. Now, of the five that you just heard, which of the five love languages do you uh, express your love the most? And which one do you receive the love the most? Um, touch, because, mm -hmm. and it's, it's both ways, like, because she's the same way, like, she enjoys it just for me to like she has to be on top of me like when we're sleeping she has to be touching me like her leg has to be on top of me right <laughs> so, so it, it's touch i know it's touch between us mm -hmm. and um um she likes presents mm -hmm. okay uh, okay presents for me don't really matter um so he loves receive gifts. She's about physical touch too. Okay. Yeah. And then for me, I think maybe um probably verbally, like just kind yeah. of affirmation. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. If I were to stand back and 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 think about, and we've known each other for almost a year. If I were to stand back and think about it, if someone were to pass along a good compliment to you, you receive it well. And that, and I think. That's one of my big time love languages that not only that I receive, but I speak well, uh, words of affirmation. Um, uh, and, and of course, physical touch is more than, you know, more than just, you know, cuddling or even sex, you know, it's, you know, holding hands or hugging or cuddling or kissing, you know, yeah. you know, or, or even just, or, or even just one of those comforting touches that you do when, whenever you see someone that you love hurting, yeah. uh, yeah, I like I like physical touch. I know my uh I know what my wife quality time is probably chiefly amongst all of them. Oh yeah, wifey loves vacations. Yeah, wifey loves loves for us to go, and it's just us two. Mm -hmm. And when we go away, and it's just us two, we have the best time. Yeah, yeah. And I have I have to make this confession. Uh, so <laughs> you know, sometimes you you get into lulls in marriages and I had gotten to a lull in mine thinking, well, well, you know, wifey's here. We're in the same house. Everything is good. And you know, not, there's no, there's no fire to put out in either one of our individual or collective lives. So everything is good. But one day the, the missus said to me, mm, the, the passion's not there and you spend too much time away from me. And it took me a few months to really have it click. And I was like, Oh, she wants to spend time with me. She wants to spend that time with me. And I don't mean, you know, just bedroom stuff. I just mean just dating. You know, I did not realize how important. No, that is that. Uh, me and wifey do go out. Like, yeah. When not, not right now, lately, we've been saddled with grandkids. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> right, right. Of course. <laughs> but me and wifey do go have our moments where we do go out. Yeah. And we'll go out to eat. Mm -hmm. Or we'll go play slots or right. whatever. But it's it's us going out and it's mm -hmm. us together. Yeah. And then we'll go sit down and have something to eat. And right. So that's our that's that's her that's how little we get away. And then 
of course, when we go on our vacations and stuff like that. So, yeah, I undersold so much how powerful quality time is. And then when I started to do it, I was like, oh, this is great. And then I started to realize I liked it because we I actually can... find series. We find series that we enjoy. And yeah. We'll watch it. We'll binge watch it. Mm-hmm. We'll sit in bed and we'll binge watch. And that's the only time I really watch TV is when and that's the only time I really watch TV is, is when, when I'm with her. Mm-hmm. And when we're in bed and we're watching, that's it. I don't, before I used to spend more time, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, there's so much more to me just than just spending time watching TV. I got like, especially with everything we're doing and I rather spend time creating content mm-hmm. and, and doing that than spending time watching the news or so I save the time to watch series and watch TV with when I'm with her. Yeah. And then other than that, I don't really watch TV. I'm sort of similar in that regard. Um, the, and the only reason why I do watch TV outside of her is so that, so that, so that my wife doesn't think that it's always about content creation for me because I could stand, I could spend all day doing that. Yeah, uh, I mean, I could spend all day doing that. I could spend all day creating videos. I could spend all day doing treatments. I mean, I could do that, uh, and I could spend all day, you know, planning shows and writing scripts for them. Uh, but you know, I try to take heed to those words that she said. You know, take time out for yourself, even when I'm not around. Take time out for yourself. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I'll do that. Which of the five, and, and I'll say the five again, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, which of those five, uh, uh, if your wife were to do or have, or, or she's done to you, that you're like, you could see that it's coming out of a place of love, but you couldn't receive it because that's just now not how you speak in love language. <laughs> That's the thing. She knows what it at some sense. She knows. Like she knows, like, because she knows that touches is what it it, it is what works for me. Like hugging mm-hmm. me, kissing me, and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That works for me. Works for me too. Yeah. And so it's not like she and 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 then then and in that matter, we're both kind of similar, like with what we want. Yeah. So, 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 but with her, it's quality time. I'm good with that. And then the touching and then the affirmations. Mm-hmm. Like she likes, she likes to be noticed. Like when she does, does her hair and I know yep. and I don't see something, it's like, oh, you don't like the hair. So there's mm-hmm. some, sometimes I'll be missing it out. I noticed that she got her hair done. And instead of me saying something at that moment, oh, man. she comes out, oh, you're not going to say nothing. So that's oh. when I know I f***ed up. And I'm, yeah. I'm serious, dude. Yeah, you, your wife and mine must be Siamese twins. I've done this. <laughs> I've done that before. She she'd come home from the salon, and I totally forgot that she actually went to the salon, and she probably told me, "Yeah, uh, uh, this date, like uh, here's a Wednesday. Yeah, I'm gonna get my hair done." Totally forgot about it, and then I'm looking straight at her, and I'm seeing her hair's done. I don't say a thing, and she, and and then she, and then she'll do something, you know. Uh, She'll exaggerate, you know. She'll, you know, she'll do a hair flip. Oh no! It's like, she, yeah, if, I know she didn't say anything about your hair. If What's she speaks, up? If she What's speaks wrong? with her mom, if she speaks with her mom, she'll say, "So, see, man, said pelo." Like I did my hair, but someone didn't notice. Someone <laughs> didn't like, notice it. Oh yeah. Oh, that, that that's happened too. That's happened too. It's like, oh, I'm so glad that you complimented me. Someone else didn't. <laughs> yeah, that that's happened to just me like too. that. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, she said it in Spanish, so of course. Uh, yes, yeah, we'll see. But now, now that is where they—that's where they part ways because uh, wifey doesn't do Spanish. So. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah, I know where I can't go wrong with with the wife. A handbag. Well, I can't go wrong with a handbag with the wife either. Her a perfume, her favorite perfume. Mm-hmm. And if I if I'm sure if if I'm sure if I was to get a gift gift card to Victoria's Secret, she would not be upset with that either. Oh yeah, I don't think she'd turn that down. <laughs> so, so 
yeah, so those are three things I know for sure that will make her happy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And I think when I um it just in just in reintroducing myself to this, because I actually read the book cover to cover a long time ago. Uh when I reintroduced myself to this concept, I was like, ah. Okay. Um, it is it, put me more in touch with how I should speak love to my wife and how she should speak love to me and how I can communicate with that with her and how I should appreciate how she communicates that with me or pay attention to how she does it. Mm. Uh, and, and I've, what I've also learned is that the love language is shift. Like quality time for me wasn't a thing a long time ago. Actually recently it wasn't a thing. Now it is. Uh, versus uh, acts of service, which you know, basically it means you could you could say whatever, but it's it's the doing that does it. Now the wifey okay. is big on on acts of service, but okay. it's not as big as others. Okay, so wifey gets whenever we're home together, mm-hmm. and it's us, and, and, and like if, if I'm home and she's home for breakfast, she gets breakfast in bed without fail. Cool. She has she she has breakfast and she has coffee and breakfast in bed, without fail. And that's just, I know. She she be like, "Are you gonna make me? Are you gonna make me breakfast?" She already knows the answer to that. I already know the answer. To <laughs> you already know the answer too. Yeah. <laughs> or if not, I'll go and and pick out breakfast. Right. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I love how this actually t- details. There's not just one way that you express love. You can express it so many different ways. You just got to find the right ways and how your your partner, in our case,'s wives receive it. I haven't watched BET in years. KP. Drake needs to come back with another triple platinum album. E. Digger. And then you have Ray J. Like, I can't stand that river cricket. The Guru. Okay, the level of crack she's smoking, I don't want it. BS3 Network proudly presents the Knucklehead Chronicles podcast, where from car tips to hot topics to meet me of the week, anything goes. Live every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central. Are you looking for something to do on your lunch break? Well, there's a show on the BS3 Network that has only four words to say to you. With AJ, powered by JMNE. Live weekdays at noon central. And welcome back to Mentality, where this is the safe space for all men. I am Cole Johnson, joined by Wise Jefe. And since this is sort of a Valentine's Day themed 
uh, uh, edition. We're going to ride that wave of love again in this segment. Uh, we talked about love languages in something to ponder. In this one, we're going to touch on why are you lying in your relationship? Hmm. <laughs> Debut of the segment from the experts, we'll probably tell you why. Now, this segment touches on subject matter that comes from either a psychiatrist or a psychologist or some medical professional. And so <laughs> it was funny. I came upon this USA Today article, which talked about this, and uh, the person interviewed a clinical psychologist on the thoughts of why we lie in relationships. Um, and some of the reasons are, you know, you're trying to upkeep the previous lies you told. Some are you trying to avoid conflict. Some are you're doing something you shouldn't. Uh, some are both you and your partner are struggling with communication. Uh, and some you're, you're either scared the truth will push them away or you want to preserve uh, your independence or autonomy. Or in my case... When you know she already knows the answer to the question and you decide you can still lie. <laughs> or you know you... the answer to the question. She knows the answer to the question. So my thing is, you both know the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking me the question? So obviously, <laughs> I want to make this entertaining. And obviously, I am going to lie. <laughs> I am. I, I'm, I am. She, she'll you tell you. <laughs> she'll tell you. Like, why, are you lying? She's like, why are you lying about the little <laughs> shit? I'm like, <laughs> we know the answer already. <laughs> so since you want to ask me a question to that, that we both know the answer to, I'm just going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord that she understands that she understands that she gets it she gets it she still plays into it that's what that's what makes it even funnier <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh um <laughs> i can relate to that i don't do that but i can relate to that <laughs> i don't do that but yeah no, I, I don't do that. But I I'm can not saying you do. I'm not saying you do. Yeah. I, I know that's my thing. Yeah, I can relate to that because my father did that, does that with my mother. You know, it's like, I don't understand. If you know the answer to it, right? Why? Why do you need me to confirm it? <laughs> I, we, we know the answer. We know the answer. You know the answer. I know the answer. No need to ask the question. It, it it got to the point for me, man, where when my mother would would actually do that, she would ask questions she knew the answer to. It would got to it got to the point where I got to be a pro at. I'm only going to answer the question you ask. I already know what you want to know the answer to, but you're going to have to work to get to that answer. Work for it. Ask all the questions. Like, I want you to ask the most amount of questions you need to get to the answer you want. And it would frustrate my mother. She hated it because she'd know that she's trying to walk me to an answer. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to have you, I'm going to have to force me to walk you to that answer because I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> and she would, and, and without fail, when I was younger, she would be screaming angry at me, which she would actually get to the money question she would want to ask. I would be, I was that way all throughout my teenage years, all throughout my 20s, and all throughout my 30s, and all almost all throughout my 40s. And to the point where it ruined relationships because that's how I was with my with the exes, including my ex-wife. I was that way with them too. 
I wouldn't even be with the ask the question when I ask. I never was that way. I was like, okay, so you're asking questions, you're probing. Okay. He has answered that question you asked. No, like if it's a if it's a if it's something I know she doesn't know the answer to, then that's yes. Different. Yeah, that's then different. yes. But if it's something that she knows, mm-hmm. she knows. Yeah, that's different. Like yeah, that's different. I I sometimes do that with my wife. I sometimes do that with her, but I learned that there's times I can I can get away with doing that, and there's times I can't. And so I'm like, okay. So I pick it. I pick it. Choose doing it with her, but I don't. I don't do. I don't do it as. I don't do it as much, and I don't do it with as much glee <laughs> as, as you. Do, do, oh, do, do you ever have those moments that you just? They're just funny moments like we have a lot of funny moments like mm-hmm. some funny things just something might happen and and then just be hilarious to both of us yeah oh yeah oh yeah totally definitely and <laughs> but uh what what i do love about learning about that is wow a lot of these things in the article that i read a lot of these things i mean i i did <laughs> I did. I did try to lie in relationships to avoid conflict. Uh, I don't do it now. I just. I just keep my mouth shut to avoid conflict. <laughs> uh, you know, I did try to lie to do uh, 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 and try to cover up something I did, or, or I did try to uh, build up, build upon a lie with another one. I, I mean, I did do those things. Yeah, I think you know, every guy does. Yeah. I've learned to get out of that, but I did do those things. And if I were to say, yeah, all on all of the time I've been alive, yeah, I never lied. <laughs> Please. No. That's a lie. Right? That would be <laughs> that would be a lie. Yeah, that would be a why no, no, no. you just lie broke that. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Negro be lying. <laughs> yeah. 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 That would be that would be a straight up a Negro be lying moment. Yeah. <laughs> I, all right, so I got out on the early out, and I'm mm-hmm. headed home, and she's headed to work, and we pass each other, mm-hmm. and I pulled into the gas station. I stopped because I was gonna get me something, and she calls, and her question was, <laughs> "Where you at?" I know <laughs> you just saw me. You know you just saw me. So I decided to say, yeah, I'm at work. Why are you lying for? Well, obviously, <laughs> you know you just saw me. You you, you just, I know you saw me. You know you saw, like, so why are you asking me this question? You know where I'm at. You, you oh. know where I'm at. You just passed me on my way home. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I'm at work. Why are you lying? So obviously you know you saw me because I know I saw you. I saw you. I saw you staring at me. Like so, yes. That that was a that was a funny. That's yeah. That's that's those those are those moments. Oh my gosh. <laughs> those are those moments. Like we both saw each other, and I I lied. I lied. <laughs> I lied. That <laughs> I knew. I knew she saw me. Yeah. Not like I, I, so it wasn't like so. Temp- technically, I didn't lie because I, I. Well, I know I lied. I lied. <laughs> Later, we will have. Thoughts from the throne. This is mentality. There's a 100% chance of a laugh thunderstorm. Four men with different viewpoints take a movie, show, or documentary and review it uncensored, unfiltered, uncompromised, with no holds barred. Join BS3, Wilkes, King Doc, and H Rap B as they take on Hollywood their own way. BS3 Network proudly presents The Forecast, where HRAP always predicts If I owe you something, I ain't got it. And if you need it, get it from God! Live 
live every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central. Check your local listings for your viewing and listening pleasure. This is a BS3 Network presentation. Politics. They'll write the law, but they'll enforce it differently. Is that going to apply both ways? Religion. God never said that we can't reason together. Matter of fact, he said, let us sit and reason together. Relationship. I believe that everybody wants and needs somebody. From a man's perspective. They say, girls, if I put some polish on that and get him to some, buy some different clothes, girl, he could be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Joined a thought engineer. There's nothing wrong with me developing my piece and you developing your piece, but understand the goal is to come together. And comedian John Yogi. Negro, I don't need you putting on no chapstick up there in the pool pit. You do that over there in your chair. Get ready for. Live every Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Well, welcome back to Mentality. I am Cole, joined by Wise, or Wise at Hefe. And uh, we are, I guess, dealing with love, and we've dealt with love throughout the whole uh, episode here. But we're going to switch and deal with love of a different sort. And we're going to also debut a new segment again, <laughs> the third debut segment. And this one is Brotherhood Goals. <laughs> Now, this doesn't necessarily have to deal with blood relationship, brotherhood, no. uh, because to be quite honest, I consider wise a brother, and I believe he considers me one. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, no, this is basically relationships that are like brotherhood, uh, a brotherhood type relationship, where you can learn from what they've done and how they have built their bond. And so... A legendary bond that it, it, gets, it gets talked about every now and then, but not all that often. But it got a big spotlight this time is the one between the Motown uh, founder, uh, Barry Gordy Jr., and the former president of Motown and famed songwriter and singer and lead singer of the, the Miracles, the first lead singer of the Miracles, Smokey Robinson. So they were honored. Uh, the Grammys were actually last weekend and uh, they were honored uh, at the uh, Music Cares concert where basically there, there's a pre-Grammy party where luminaries are honored and normally it's one but in this case it happened to be two and the award is people of the year but a uh, person of the year but they decided to make persons of the year and so the two of them ended up being honored at the same time. And it touched both of their hearts. So they met where Smokey was coming in for an audition with a record company in the Detroit area. And that audition failed. Meanwhile, Barry was coming in to actually uh, submit songs because he actually was a songwriter at the time. I mean, a, a paid songwriter. He he went in to submit songs to Jackie Wilson, and you know, um, your love lifted me higher. Fame. Yeah. So they met then, and Barry saw something in Smokey, and it was at first a mentor protege type relationship. But then, when Smokey was making a lot of money for Motown and a lot of money for Barry, that relationship got closer, and that relationship got more equal, and that relationship became a brotherhood, and. I think what I love about these two is that they they definitely they definitely are um, a clear cut picture 
of what it looks like when you as a man are so comfortable with who you are, you don't put up airs in front of the other. And when you don't do that to this other person and they do the same thing to you, there is no telling how far that relationship can go. And I think that is, that is a picture perfect understanding of their relationship. I mean, 65 years. Wow. That's, that's incredible, man. That's incredible. So if you were, uh, if you were smoky, who is your Barry? <laughs> I'll put it that way. I uh, probably already know the answer to this. It, it would be Poppy J because he's the one who's been with me the longest. Like, right. He's, he was around before me. So, <laughs> right, 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 right. So right. it would be him. It, it, it's, like we we grew up together, and yeah, we we went our ways for a little bit, but now we're back together, and and it's just to me that's that's my brother, yeah, yeah that's my brother without a doubt, and mm-hmm. and we're we're doing this together, we're building this this great company, building something that um that it's for the it's for our general it's for our family, we we. We have a vision. We 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 have something that we call we are the village. Yeah. And our goal is to build our own community mm-hmm. and have and have a community of creators and, and everything and 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 build something that like because we come from a generation where we knew our neighbors. Yep. And we were raised like we tell the story all the time. We couldn't do nothing on our block without my mom finding out before the time by the time I got home. Mm-hmm. And that was this was before cell phones. Yep, I'm saying so. Got got quickly to got quick to your house. So that that's what we want. We we see this is that's what we feel is lacking, and that's something we're trying to build as as a community. And and that's the goal that we have. Yeah, and it's great to be able to to have someone who who you share a vision with, and and see the value of what we're doing. Totally, totally, and yeah, I, I'm, I've witnessed it. <laughs> and yes, uh, I figured that would be your answer. And uh, yeah, you two work very well together. Um, and I mean, to the point where it's like, I know they're family, but they treat each other like they aren't family. They treat each other deeper than that, and that's cool. It's it's, it's cool to witness seeing that. But see, that's because. We're different, but we're still kind of mm-hmm. cut from the same cloth. Yeah, we we like we're we're polar opposites. Like, oh yeah, he's he's Felix Unger. I'm Oscar Madison. Let's put mm-hmm. it like that. Right. <laughs> Literally, oh, yeah. like he is Felix Unger, and I am Oscar Madison. Mm-hmm. And so, but our loyalty can never be questioned. Hmm. I'm saying when we're loyal to someone, we're loyal to a fault. Like where we we just that's how we are. That's what, and he's getting to the stage where he's like, yeah, I, I've been putting loyalty into the wrong people. Oh yeah, I know that feeling. Mm. For me, and actually, it'll be family for me as well. Uh, and actually, it's, it, it, it's it'll be two people. Um. My father's one, and 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 the reason why I can pick him is that it was as if how things went in both of our lives in different stages of our lives. It was like we only had each other, you know, in, in terms of in terms of friendships, yeah. and and the friendship aspect actually started earlier than I thought. But but make no mistake, make no mistake. If I stepped out of line, he was willing to snatch me back and and snap respect <laughs> into me. So it wasn't like I got my way with him. It never was that way. But it was he wanted to treat me as an equal as early as he possibly could. To the point where when I became old enough, I more than understood what that meant. And I still had the respect of this man as my father. Yeah. You know, so 
I almost feel I almost feel guilty from that standpoint because I know I can speak to people who did not have the father grow not have their fathers grow up in their homes. And I gotta say my father's probably if I had to pick somebody outside of my wife who is my best friend, it's him. And and I mean he I mean he's he has such a wealth of knowledge and his heart is huge. And there isn't there isn't a subject matter too deep or too taboo for me to go to him and say, Dude, I don't know what I don't know what's up, but ho- hopefully you can help me with this. Here's this, and he's the same way with me. Mm-hmm. To Barry and to to Smokey, um, all I gotta say to you brothers is thank you for showing us that love can come in such a wonderful package, and you can still be two strong, grounded men. And that you can respect the other for who they are and you love the other for who they are and you big up the other for who they are. And I'm glad you set the path for how we are supposed to have brotherhoods grow and blossom and flourish in a world that pretty much decides that we shouldn't be brothers. And so I thank you. I thank you two gentlemen for showing the way for the brotherhood that Wise and I are even doing yeah. because it is thoroughly appreciated. The fuck it is. Mm. not done yet here comes thoughts from the throne now this is where the, each of us have two minutes to talk about what is on our mind in terms of wisdom or in terms of anything that deals with something that would improve upon or something that actually bothers us as men and how we deal with one another as men. And so we each have two minutes. Wise, I will cede the floor to you. King, floor is yours. All right. So <laughs> I, I just want to touch on um, just going out and, and being yourself, you know, the, your true self, being able to, to be your authentic self. And that's something I've been able to really, I've been able to express myself with doing my podcast and and creating the content that I have. It's actually become my my outlet and and it's allowed me to just truly be me, not hide who I am. And I'm grateful for that because it's opened up so much for me. It's opened up so many doors, opportunities, like, the relationships I've been able to build. And it's all because I'm allowed to be myself. And that, that's some, that's something important. I think everyone should be able to be themselves. Find out who you truly are and 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 shine and, and just be you. There's, there's no need to copy anyone. There's no need to be like anyone. I understand you admire people and stuff like that, but there's a specialness to you. You're special as well. So just find that person and and be that person. And every day I'm I'm becoming more and more the person that I want to be. And I'm just truly grateful for that. So that's my two minutes. Mm, That's powerful. There's a saying that says, um, you were born an original, don't die a copy. Oh man, yeah, that's some powerful stuff. Uh all right. So, you know, I, I was trying to think of what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say this, and the brotherhood thought uh, thought has really uh, touched me. So, I'm going to send this in dedication to a fellow brother of Wise's and mine, and that is to Brian Snow and. 
brother, I want you to receive these flowers that I'm sending you heart to heart. Now, I knew you years before you went under the knife for cancer surgery. And in the 10 months since you have recovered from that, you have shown nothing but uncommon valor. You could have cowered. You could have ro rolled in your corner. You could have said, you know, man, this is just too tough for me. No, no. You went out the bed. You went out the surgery bed fighting. And you continue to fight. And you continue to fight. And because of that, you, sir, are an inspiration to all of us. And you most certainly are an inspiration to me. So more than just my being a partner on a show that you created years before I was even thought of in your life. Your example of manhood, however it is, is a beautiful thing to witness every single day. And I'm honored to be part of your family and honored to have that brotherhood with you because I share that on the mic and outside the mic every single day. So thank you for showing what a king is supposed to be even in the most tumultuous of times. Because of that though, you shine like a diamond. Shout out to you, Rihanna. And those are thoughts from the throne. Anything, sir, before we close? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, check out Bobby Jane Wise uh, Friday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the BS3 Network, uh, their YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's a quality show to check out. Uh, believe me, you, <laughs> you'll be thoroughly entertained. You'll learn something new no matter what it is and no matter if it comes from Wise or from Bobby J. Uh that they're both wonderful, they're both wonderful people, and I appreciate the both of them. Well, that will do it for this episode and this installment of Mentality for Wise. I'm Cole, and uh, we thank you for uh, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, and loving the content that is for men, about men, and toward men. And as we always part in saying, our secret technique is that we always speak with mentality. See you next week. Peace. That's